<sighs> All right. Last second. Uh, that would be something of an oversimplification. But is this nation worth existing for eternity? Stripped of ambitions, stripped of the potential for change. It does nothing more than simply exist. It is a hollow shell of a nation. Hmm. I wonder what loss would it really be to anyone if such a nation were destroyed? Miko, retract your words. Never changing eternity is the promise I made to my people. But what your people need from you is not your promises. They want your attention. Your divine gaze. <laughs> you mean visions? Humans have a lifespan of barely a hundred years. They cannot afford to bear any extra losses. But I have experienced it all. That is why I have chosen to guide them along the correct path toward eternity. Oh. <sighs> but eternity is far too cruel a fate for you, eh? <laughs> for me? Not only have you stopped paying attention to the world, but you have stopped paying attention to yourself. It must have been terribly lonely here, all alone, for centuries on end. But it is necessary. You will miss much by refusing progress. You seek to prevent loss, but have you considered all you are losing by remaining here in stasis for all eternity? You are obviously lonely. And yet, for the sake of eternity, you choose to stretch your loneliness out to infinity. Tell me this. Why is the sky here that was once so dark glowing again? Why now? This is your plane of euthymia. It's your inner world. So it can only mean that you are happy to see me again. You have found the loneliness here unbearable for a long time now, haven't you? I... have nothing to say to that. <laughs> but I have so much to say to you. Let me tell you all that has happened over the last few centuries. <laughs> How long will that take? As a fox envoy, I have an excellent memory. I recall every detail of the last few centuries with perfect clarity. So it will probably take me another few centuries to relay it to you. <laughs> Miko, I never thought I would have the chance to meet with you like this again. <sighs> Seeing you again is a change to eternity. And a very nice surprise. Hey, you said it. <laughs> Since you are willing to admit that, I suppose that means we can still be friends? <laughs> what a childish conversation this is. Anyway... Now that I have been defeated by you and your clan, I will honor your wish to abolish the Vision Hunt Decree. But, with regards to eternity, and the question of whether this nation should move forward, I need time to give it some thought. <laughs> you are the one who's been acting like a child from the very beginning. As promised, the Raiden Shogun abolished the Vision Hunt Decree. Finally, her people's wishes penetrated her locked heart. Beyond the plane of Euthymia, she saw what eternity means in the eyes of the world. When one's fervent ambition burns brightly, the gods will cast their gaze upon you. Some ambitions have the power to heal wounds, to bring victory, to inspire hope. But some ambitions outlive their masters long after the soul ascends. 
they remain as they were in the beginning. Burning bright and true for all eternity. Hello, if it isn't the Triumphant Traveler. And why might you be visiting the shrine? A sign of piety, perhaps. You literally told us to come meet you here! <laughs> I was just joking. I've been waiting for you. Seems like someone's in a pretty good mood. Mm-hmm. Catching up with an old friend I hadn't seen in years was truly delightful. By the way, I heard that you had a duel before the throne. With a Fatui Harbinger, no less. Courageous and astute. I must say, I am most impressed. Defeating Signora head-on in a duel means that your strength exceeds my expectations. Still, you did end up victorious. I gather congratulations are in order. Wait a second. Did you say Gnosis? As in, the little thing that looks something like a chess piece. Yep, that's the one. You've seen one too? Gnosis belong to the Seven. They're what keep them connected to Celestia. Oh. Well, what's wrong? I handed that over. <laughs> was I supposed to save your skin from the balladeer exactly? <laughs> wow. Wow. The balladeer is number six of the Fatui Harbingers. In terms of strength, he is superior to Signora. I'm not the kind of person who risks life and limb for any old reason. <laughs> After A created her puppet vessel, she no longer had anywhere to put it. As her erstwhile closest friend, A handed it over to me. And I've kept it in the Grand Narukami Shrine ever since. She no longer needs the power of the Gnosis, and in any case, she tells me she has severed ties with Celestia. Thus the Gnosis became not only useless, but also a potential source of conflict. Is that not a good bargain, exchanging it for the one at the core of the plan? Judging by the results, at least, I dare say I struck a good deal. <laughs> when you put it like that, Paimon has to agree. The Traveler is worth more than a Gnosis. <sighs> well, what's done is done. But I hardly think we'll be getting it back now. Let's leave the past in the past. Um, so anyway, you still haven't told us why you called us here today. <laughs> it's to thank you. Really? You intend to travel all over to Vat, and the time has come for the Inazuma leg of your trip to come to an end, has it not? As a mark of my gratitude, I will answer any questions you may have about the road ahead or the events of the past. What would you like to know about? Sorry, I haven't a clue. 
I'm also unfamiliar with the god you describe. But if you still have doubts about A, I would say they are misplaced. Not only does she not fit your description, but she voluntarily gave up her gnosis long ago, severing her ties with Celestia in the process. That's good to hear. Otherwise, given that I'm her familiar, it could have made our relationship rather awkward, don't you think? Don't worry. We aren't looking to pick a fight with you. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. May you soon discover the truth behind it all. As for your sister's whereabouts, I will use all the resources at my disposal to investigate it, and I will also borrow some of Ayato's people from the Shiumatsuban. I'll let you know if I find out anything. Consider it part of my means of thanking you. That puppet was built with technology that has been lost to time. Perhaps she, as a god, is the only one privy to the knowledge of its origins. Still, there is one other thing on this topic that I suspect you may be curious to know. Before A began modifying her own godly form, she took it upon herself to create a prototype puppet. So, you mean there are three Raiden Shokens? No. The prototype was merely a proof of concept. Its appearance and intellect were not based on A. It was a test. The original plan was for A to simply discard it. But perhaps A thought this to be too cruel, because in the end she chose only to seal the power within it. Later, this puppet wandered Inazuma as an ordinary human male with his own consciousness. Until... It's Kara. The Fatui took an interest in him. Ugh! Not the Fatui! Some eccentric geniuses in the ranks of the Fatui made adjustments to the prototype. Not only unsealing his power, but very likely rendering him even more formidable than his original specifications. Mm-hmm. The object of divine creation is now the one who has taken possession of the Gnosis. And the so prototype puppet is now kind known of as like the Balladeer. Baal in what a crazy story! Peak. It is, isn't it? That's who can peak. say whether it's coincidence or destiny? After leaving Inazuma, hmm, I think it would be easiest for you to go to Sumeru. journey so far yes well sumeru is the land of the god of wisdom where the quest for wisdom and knowledge is never-ending but their obsession gives rise to some truly inexplicable things for example in sumeru knowledge is holistically managed as a resource knowledge is a resource yes i don't know whether it was the sages or lesser lord kusanali who came up with the idea Lesser Lord Kusanali? That's a cute name. Oh, you haven't heard. Lesser Lord Kusanali is the deity in whom the people of Sumeru place their faith. It's their chosen term of endearment for her. I'm sure you must have some things to discuss with her, too. I wish you all the best. I'm surprised an outlander like you is aware that there was once a change of Electro Archon. Few citizens of Inazuma are aware of this. Morax told us. He said that the Electro Archon Ball has passed away. Yes. The truth of the matter is that there were two twin gods, Baal and Beelzebul. Twin gods? They won the Archon War together, and when Baal established the Shogunate, Beelzebul became her Kagemusha, or Shadow Warrior. In other words, she acted as Baal's body double. Beelzebul is A, with whom we are now both acquainted. Baal's name was Makoto. As far as the world was aware, there were not two, but one. They complemented each other, and they ruled Inazuma jointly. So there was no need for the public to know the truth. In fact, the name Baal and the title of Raiden Shogun was understood to refer to both of them. Right up until... Until what? Makoto died several hundred years ago in a war that I was not personally involved in. Since then, A has assumed the Shogunate. Losing her sister must have been super hard on A. That was when A began to change. Makoto was her greatest loss. 
Paimon feels like she understands A a lot better now after finding that out. So what kind of god was Makoto? I didn't spend a great deal of time with her, but my impression was she was a gentle god, who in each moment cherished the beauty of what was before her. Are you sure? Okay, then. Oh, Traveler, do you still have the Omamori I gave you? Keep it safe. Is that all you intend to do with it? There was me thinking that you might hang it around your neck to show off to the world, telling everyone who inquired that it was given to you by none other than Yai Miko, the wise and beautiful. Who in their right mind would do that? <laughs> Okay, I'll stop. Now, a question for you. Traveler, what is your ambition? I don't know if I achieved it already, but uh, it was meant to be to find a home or something like that. I see. But that is merely a small goal based on what preoccupies you here and now. Your ambition should be something that transcends the world below and the starry sky above. Something that shines in unison with fate itself. Perhaps the reason you do not possess a vision is that such an ambition has yet to be engendered within you. It's a possibility. Continue on your journey, and maybe that moment will come to pass. Go! Oh. me Right. Say that he stays safe. 